Hey everybody, Scuba Steve here. Um, first of all, I want to thank everybody for 300 subs. It really means the world to me. Um, I never really thought my channel was going to get as far as it is. And I can't thank everyone enough. So, and for that, I owe you an explanation as to why there has not been many uploads. The reason is I work third shift for FedEx and needless to say, <laughs> it's very tiresome to do so. I mean, humans are not supposed to be nocturnal anyway. And the fact of the matter is being tired all the time just kind of sucks, honestly. So I haven't had much time to run trains or anything of that fun nature. But um, this video, uh, I'm going to do a redo of one of my earlier videos. And it's going to be a redo of a review on the Union Pacific um, MTH propane turbine. So stay tuned for that. After World War II, the Union Pacific Railroad sought to remove steam locomotives from their roster. And that included the 4884 Big Boys. Diesel locomotives have been prevalent for a little while now, but most cranked out a maximum of 1,500 horsepower and could not handle the loads that the Union Pacific was experiencing at that time. So the American Locomotive Company, Alco, and General Electric, GE, teamed up to build the gas turbine electric locomotives. The Union Pacific Railroad was the largest operator of gas turbine electric locomotives in the world. 55 of these locomotives would be produced, ranging from 4,500 horsepower all the way up to 8,500 horsepower. We will be focusing on the first generation of the GTELs, or gas turbine electric locomotives. They were built between 1952 and 1953 and numbered 51 through 60. The turbines ran on Bunker C heavy fuel oil, which was the literal bottom of the barrel when it came to the oil distillation process. Because the fuel was so viscous and harmful to the turbines, they were later converted to run on number six heavy black fuel oil, which was a little cleaner, but a little more expensive. Bunker C was used because it was cheap. Number 57 was converted to run on compressed propane, the propane was a lot cleaner than any of the fuels that were prototypically used with the turbines. The biggest drawback was the safety concerns with propane. So number 57 was converted to run on bunker seat once again, and no other conversions were made. In total, 55 turbines would be made for the Union Pacific Railroad. Only two remain, and those would be the third generation turbines that were numbered 26 and 18. What eventually led to these locomotives demise was fuel consumption and one important issue that actually got these locomotives banned in certain cities in California. And that issue? The noise level. Whenever these turbines idled underneath an overpass, the asphalt would melt. The third generation of gas turbine locomotives were nicknamed Big Blows because the residents nearby the tracks did not like the sound, or they were nicknamed Bird Burners, which was a little less common. Now we're going to take a good look at this model. Starting up front, you have a, a remote coupler. The pilot's pretty plain, but um, to be honest, pilots on the turbines were pretty plain and this is prototypically correct. You have the UP uh, shield and wings, lighted number boards, marker lights. This is your Mars light and these are your headlights. Uh, you have horns up top and uh, you have number 57 painted there. Moving back a little bit, you have your sandboxes here. Again, your horns. This is your turbine intake. This is what where the air came in through the turbines. Um, this air intake was added because um, I think it started with unit number 53 because they were having problems where the turbine wasn't um, being at its most efficient. So these uh, roof mounted intakes were later added. The exhaust was is right here and this is where you add your smoke fluid. And to add smoke, you just take this piece off and you pour smoke down onto this little tray inside. I'll show you that in a second. 
So this is where you add smoke. And to simply um, add smoke, like I said earlier, you just pour it onto this tray and it trickles down into the unit. And when you're done, you place your uh, smokestack back on top like that. One thing to note about the uh, exhaust is that it's angled back because the intake is right here. Because you don't want to have your exhaust gases getting mixed in with your incoming fresh air. Back a little further, you have lines coming from the propane tank, which is right here, that are going to be sent into your turbine. And of course, you have some other lines to go into your turbine as well. Um, this is your donkey engine smoke unit. And of course, to add smoke, you could just pour it right down the stack. But the donkey engine was a 250 horsepower engine that was used to move the turbines along um, in, the, in the yards without having to engage the turbine itself. I know I keep saying turbine and turbine, doesn't matter to me. I think somebody made fun of me for that, but we'll see if somebody else does. Back here is your propane tank. Um, these hoses I just added, they were just a uh, clear fuel hose. There is a, like a Lincoln pin type connector right here. This is your connection for your rear coupler. This hatch opens, but there's really nothing to look inside unless you wanna look at that screw in there. Uh, the turbine's tender is die cast where the locomotive is made out of ABS. This locomotive was equipped with MTH's Protosound 2 and it was cataloged back in, I think it was 01, and they were delivered around 2002. So this model is around 20 years old. I wanted this model ever since I was a kid. So I'm kind of glad when I got it. All right, now let's power this thing up.
All right, this wraps up this redo of the review. Uh, thank you all for watching. Uh, please like, favorite, share, and subscribe for more. And I'll talk to you all later. Steven out.